Welcome, my friends of the interwebs, and welcome uh, to part two of my uh, fracking video. Okay, I left you off with, we had, uh, if you drill down uh, for a water well and you fracture coal, you will end up with some amount of gas, methane gas, coal bed methane gas, coming up through your water, through your well. And that will, of course, come out through the faucet, and depending on how gassy that well is, can, eat, can, and, and can be ignited. And I remember this from when I was a kid. You know, when I was a kid, we used to go, <laughs> remember I told you that the water would pull in that bottom land between my house and the railroad tracks. Um, we, would, we could set that on fire, I mean, because there was that much gas that was coming out. You know, so when I watched this, uh, uh, when I watched this documentary, and I use that that term very loosely, when I watched this documentary, uh, and and they make the connection of uh, fracking and um, setting your uh, your water in your kitchen on fire, I did have to call bullshit. Now, w w can fracking make make gas migrate uh, up to your water well? I don't know. Maybe. That would make sense, I guess, to some degree. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the geology that's involved with it. Um, all I can tell you is that nowhere in that documentary did it ever say that in coal-bearing regions of the United States, gassy wells have existed forever. <laughs> I mean, forever. They didn't make that. Why? Well, that's simple enough. They didn't want to make that argument. They wanted to just tie fracking into damaging people's wells. Now, I did have a subscriber of mine, I think it was a subscriber of mine, somebody left a comment about how uh, one of the neighboring frack jobs um, ruined the casing on his well. I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know, I, I really don't. I, like I said at the beginning of my first video, I'm not an expert at fracking. You know, I've got one well that's fracked on my property, it wasn't hydrofracked, it was acid fracked. You know, so I mean, I don't know. You know, um, all I can tell you is that whenever I watch a documentary or whenever I hear people talk about a situation and they don't give uh, all the facts, I immediately assume that they have an agenda that they're trying to push. Okay. Now, here's the thing. And here's going to be my slam against environmentalists because they are such, they're deceivers. They're absolute deceivers. They're every bit as bad as the corporations that they rail against. The fact of the matter is, is that the environmental groups have an agenda. The agenda is to completely get off of hydrocarbons as a, a fuel source in the United States. Whether that's getting off of coal for, for uh, manufacture, manufacture of electricity, or whether that's getting off of natural gas for that too, for the manufacture of electricity. Um, and, and listen, any kind of hydrocarbon they are against. And they are not above lying, deceiving, cheating, and all-around douchebaggery to try to make those sales. It's kind of like the ends justify the means to environmentalists. Now, I'm an environmentalist in the sense that, look, I don't believe in shitting in your living room. I think that's about the stupidest thing you can do, okay? But I also don't believe in completely hamstringing the United States' ability to, uh, to function in a civilized world. And what do I mean by that? And the bottom line, people, is that Nicole's a good example, okay? We get, we get a lot of our electricity from coal. If the environmentalists put regulations to the point where it doesn't make fiscal sense for power companies to use coal, which, by the way, is abundant like you wouldn't believe in this country, and it's cheap. It's a cheap way to, to, to generate electricity. But if the, if the power companies can't do it, then they'll, you know, they'll have to go to alternatives. Right now, natural gas is at $3, and a little over $3 a thousand cubic foot or a BTU. That will go through the roof, which, you know, hey, I got gas wells on my property. That's not so bad for me, <laughs> you know, but it's bad for the country. You know, and the thing of it is, is that the big thing is they think that hydro is going to replace uh, coal. First of all, if you want to dam up every river in North America, you could probably replace hydro uh, or coal with hydro. All right. But the ecological disaster that that would create would be would just, it'd be crazy. Um, uh, uh, listen, I'm all about solar. I love solar. I own solar stuff. The fact of the matter is, is that solar cannot replace coal. Coal burns 24 seven. It creates base load power 24 seven, 365. You cannot say that about uh, windmills and you cannot say that about solar panels. You know, it's just not realistic. I mean, we have not had a realistic discussion in this country about power. 
you know, and, and what it means to have affordable power. Because let me tell you something, affordable power is key. It's absolutely key. It's key for our country to be able to compete internationally with any other country. Because I'm telling you right now, China, who is making quickly making us their lapdogs, China has embraced coal. They don't really care. You know, <laughs> bottom line, you know, people are like, well, yeah, China's embracing solar only to build the panels to sell to us cheap. <laughs> you know, so the industry that's here in the United States right now, First Solar is a good example, uh, won't be here in five years. I, I, I would, I wouldn't bet my life on it, but I, I would, I feel pretty good about making a large bet on that. Why? Because they're not going to be able to compete. They're making, they're manufacturing solar panels here right now. They're going to be able to compete with the Chinese. But the Ch the argument here is the Chinese are not making solar panels, so they can, uh, so they can. Um, use that to generate electricity in their country. That's not what's going on. Anybody that thinks that is what's going on is crazy. They're building a, a coal burning power plant one a week. Why? Because it's the cheapest, most effective way to create base load power. Now, natural gas is important as a replacement. So for example, if you wanted to get away from coal, okay, natural gas is other than nuclear. Natural gas is the only real alternative. Seriously, the only real alternative. And the only way that we could do that is if we allow fracking. Now, does that mean that if it's proven, and I mean proven, I don't mean bullshit speculation. If it's proven in the end that, that uh, a lot of places shouldn't be fracked because it will have a negative impact on water supplies, then absolutely we stop the fracking. Okay? Thank God we have a shit ton of this stuff in the country. Or embrace nuclear, you know. <laughs> Fukushima, <laughs> that's all you got to say about that. You know, you can do that. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, I think what's happened, and this is just my speculation, by the way, okay, but I think what's happened is that the environmentalists had seen a game changer. And I will tell you that fracking, hydrofracking in general, uh, is a game changer. Two things have been really big game changers in the natural gas industry, and that's horizontal drilling and hydrofracking. Those were huge game changers because they allowed you, or they allowed us, to take uh, seams of, uh, of uh well, they, by the way, they do horizontal coal, drill coal, but uh, for for methane gas. But uh, no, it, it allowed uh, it allowed them to get into a shale formation like the Barnett Shale, and just produce enormous. I mean, enormous amounts of natural gas. Yeah, I don't even know how much natural gas we. I mean, if you wanted to to pan it out for years, it's hundreds of years worth of natural gas. And I think what happened was the environmentalists seen that, and it seemed a game changer, and they thought to themselves, "Holy shit." Uh, we're never going to be able to get off of hydrocarbons if, uh, if we allow this to continue. How can we stop it? Well, let's start a disinformation campaign uh, against what's changed, which is the hydrofracking, and let's scare the bejeebus out of people and make them think that hydrofracking is going to destroy the, the, the water resources of the United States. Therefore, the people will backlash against it and, and politicians will be scared by, by their constituents to, you know, to, to literally put to the point where it won't be able to be used. So we can't use coal, we can't use natural gas, <laughs> but we can use windmills, uh, solar panels, and unicorn farts. And by the way, of those three, uniform, unicorn farts have the most chance of replacing coal and natural gas. I'm just saying. So anyway, hopefully that shed a little bit of light. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm an, I am not in any way, shape, or form an expert on fracking. But I do have some experience, and I do know a little bit about gassy wells because I've grown up with it. And, uh, and I do know deep down in my heart that if somebody tells you something and they don't tell you the whole story, okay, then there's a reason. <laughs> so that's what I got for you. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section. Environmentalist wackos, you, you do your thing. If it gets too ridiculous, I just block and boot you. You know, boot, boot and block. That's all I have to do. But uh, everybody take care. See ya.